Hi, my name is Jeremy Lindsay. This is the first of three video tutorials on getting started with app development for the Microsoft HoloLens. I'm going to create a simple app which has a HUD, that stands for Heads Up Display, and it'll use some of the C-sharp APIs to convert what the HoloLens's microphone hears into text. It'll then display it at the bottom of the screen for the HoloLens wearer to see subtitles during a conversation. This will demonstrate some of the potential of the HoloLens to improve accessibility, maybe to help someone who's got some hearing difficulties. As I said, there's going to be three parts to this series. This time, I'm going to look at setting up the project in Unity, positioning UI components, and deploying an initial cut of code to the HoloLens emulator. The second part is where I'm going to start coding. I'm going to show you how to use the tap gesture then in C Sharp to switch the app on and off. And in the final part, I'll show you the code that uses the dictation recognizer component to convert the words that the HoloLens hears into text displayed on the HUD for the user. I'm going to open source the code for this application at the end, and I hope you find it useful. So let's get started. OK, so I've just opened Unity on my desktop, and I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call the project HoloListener. You probably want to call yours something different. Just type that into project name and I'm going to hit create project. Okay, so Unity is loaded up with some of the default settings. First thing I'm going to do is delete the directional light component because I don't use that. So I'm going to click on main camera and I'm going to change some of the settings of the main camera. So first thing I'm going to do is change the position to be X0, Y0 and Z0 also. Then I'm going to change the skybox to be solid color and I'm going to change that color to pure black. Okay, And I'll just hit Control S to save. And I'm going to add scene name of listener and hit save. Okay. Now I have that done, I'm going to add the canvas component to the main camera. So I right click here, go to UI, find canvas. So I'm going to have to change some of the settings for the canvas again. At the moment, the render mode is screen space overlay, but I'm going to change that to world space. I'm then going to change some of the X, Y, and Z components. I'm going to change it to X is 0, Y is 0, and I'm going to put it 1 meter in front of the user. I'm going to change the width and height as well. So it's going to be 480 wide and 280 high. And finally, since that's still a bit big, I'm going to change the scale to 0.001. I'm going to zoom in so I can get a better view. Okay, so you can see here the canvas positioned in front of the main camera. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the resources folder for this project. And this is the folder I'm going to use to hold the icons. So right click on assets, hit create and select folder. And then I'm going to type in resources. And adding resources is really easy, so I'm just going to select the icons that I have pre-prepared on my desktop. One is going to be used for when the application is listening. The other one's going to be used for whenever the application is sleeping, it's not doing anything. And the third one is for whenever it's thinking or trying to process something it's heard into something it's going to display on the screen. So I'm just going to select those three icons, drop to the resources folder. And if I go and look in the resources folder, you can see the three icons in there. So the next thing I need to do is add the three UI components to the HUD. So I'm going to click on Canvas. In fact, I'm going to click on Event System and delete that because I'm not using that. So I go back and click on Canvas. Then I'm going to right click. And the first UI component I'm going to add is going to be a text component, which is going to show a textual description of what the application is doing. I'm going to hit F2 to give it a more useful name. So I'm going to change it to status text. And again, I'm going to change some of the settings for this. 
So the width and height are the first things I'm going to change. I'm going to make it 50 wide and 20 high. And I want to position this in the bottom left of the screen or the canvas. Okay. So now that I've done that, I'm going to change some of the other settings of the text. So I'm going to change the font size to be 10. I'm just going to change the text from new text to sleeping. And I'm going to align that to be center in the horizontal and vertical directions. I'm going to change the overflow to overflow. And I'll change the color to white as well. Okay, so I think I should be able to zoom in here and should be able to see the text sleeping. Yeah, there's a reverse view of it, just at the bottom left of the canvas. So that looks pretty good. So the next thing that I'm going to add is a status image. And this is going to use the icon to show what the application is actually doing. So again, I click on Canvas, right click, go to UI, and this time I'm going to select Raw Image. It's pretty important to select Raw Image for this. So I select this, and you can see the, the white box appears in the center of the screen. I'm going to make some changes to this. The width and height are correct. I want it to be uh, 100 by 100, but I think it's going to be a little bit big on the screen, so I'm going to scale it down by a quarter. And I'm going to align this to the bottom left again. Okay, still looks a little weird to me, so I'm going to change some of the settings. I'm going to change the X position to 25. I'm going to change the Y position to 30. Okay, that looks a little better. So I'm now going to change the default texture. I'm going to select sleeping and hold the left mouse button down and then drag that to the texture property. Just let that go. So you now see the sleeping icon is displayed. Okay, third and final UI component I'm going to add is probably the most important one. It's the one that actually is going to hold the subtitles. So I'm going to go back to Canvas. In fact, before I add that, I'm going to change the name of the raw image component. Hit F2 again. I'm going to change that to status image. Go to Canvas, right click, UI, and go to Text again. Hit F2, Subtitle Text. And I'm going to change the width of this to be 420 wide. I'm going to make it 40 high. And then I'm going to align this to the bottom right this time. So I'm going to change some things in the text too. I'm going to change the default text to sleeping. Might change this later. Let's see. I'll change some of the other settings that I set before. I'm going to make this overflow. I'm going to change the text color to white. I'm going to align it centrally in the vertical. Okay. So I hit save, and I think this is pretty good for the moment. Okay, for the last part of this video, we're going to look at how to build the project and deploy it to Visual Studio and also see it in the HoloLens emulator. So this is pretty simple. Again, it's just changing a bunch of settings. Go to File, Build Settings. So we want to add our listener scene, so let's click the Add Open scenes button. Then we want to make sure that this is an app configured for the Windows Store. So we click on Windows Store here and check switch platform. The Unity icon appears beside the Windows Store uh, option whenever it's ready. So a couple more settings. Change the SDK to Universal 10. Change the UWP build type to D3D. and Tick the Unity C Sharp Projects box. Then we go to player settings and we go to other and right here where it says virtual reality supported we tick that box. So it says Windows holographic. So I'm going to hit control S again just to save our progress and I'm going to hit build. 
So this window pops up and it's asking us where we want to save this. So I'm going to choose new folder and type app. This is the convention. So I'm going to select app, select folder and build the project. This takes a little while the first time we do it. So I'm going to let this finish and come back later. Okay, so the app is finished building and it's popped up this Windows Explorer window where it shows you a solution here called hololistener.solution. This is not the one we want. We want to go into the app folder and find the hololistener solution here. So I could double click that and open Visual Studio. But what I'm actually going to do instead, because I've got Visual Studio open here already, I'm going to go to Open, Project Solution, click on App, hit Hollow Listener, and hit Open. And this will open the solution in Visual Studio. Okay, so there's a few settings we need to change. We need to change here from Debug to Release, and ARM to x86. Now I've previously downloaded and installed the HoloLens emulator. I'll put a link in the description as to how to do this. But I'm just going to select this. Now again, when I hit play, this will open it in the HoloLens emulator. This takes a little while to do the first time I start the emulator. So I'm going to kick this off and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so the emulator is loaded up here. And one of the things that happens with Visual Studio the first time you run an application is that once it hit, once it's built a little window appears in the background which you need to click to proceed. So right here I need to click on continue debugging and now I'll go back to my emulator. Unity splash screen starts up. And we can see the three components. We've got sleeping in the status text bar, we've got sleeping in the subtitle bar, and we've got our icon. So I notice this looks a little bit blurry, so something's gone wrong. So I'm going to hit stop to stop debugging, and I'm going to go back to Unity, have a look at our settings. So go to Canvas. And right here is the problem. Dynamic pixels per unit should be set to 10. So I hit save, I hit control B, and I don't have to set all the settings again because it remembers what we did last time. I hit build, browse to the app folder, and hit select folder. This processes it a lot faster the second time. And the Explorer window starts up, I can close this and just go back to Visual Studio and it'll ask me to reload everything. So I hit reload and hit Control shift b to rebuild this. Again, not as long as last time. And now I'm going to hit HoloLens Emulator Play. So, like last time, I hit Continue Debugging. Unity splash screen, and hopefully the text will be, yeah, it's a little bit sharper this time. So this is the first step in creating our HUD. I'll, uh, next time, uh, as I said earlier, I'll look at the C sharp for using the tap gesture to actually start the application listening and doing something. Um, so until then, see you next time. Thanks. Bye.